Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about PewDiePie being the best ambassador for our game that we currently have. He has not cheated at Magic the Gathering. He has not cheated multiple times. He's not been banned from Magic the Gathering for cheating multiple times. He has not um, done very bad things to teenage females. He has not been accused of assault on a female or being emotionally abusive. Um, there's so many different people in our community who have much darker backgrounds than he does. Uh, when I mean darker, I mean pretty psychopathic backgrounds. And yet we have to view him as a danger to our game when we literally have people who are angry all the time and they actively try to get people banned. He doesn't go to a local game store and try, try to get everyone banned at the store because they won't lose to him. He doesn't expect you to just give up when you see him in MTG Arena so he can get his points, like many Magic pros expect you to do. And when you don't concede, he doesn't write an article about you on Channel Fireball saying how lame you are for not giving up. He is not on, well, he's on several Kotaku articles, but not the type that you would, that would have harassment in, harassment of women in the title. Yet, we view him as, the large majority of the Magic community views him as a danger. They're not a danger to Magic player. He's not a danger to Magic players. He's a danger to them and their hierarchy. So our current hierarchy on YouTube, at least, is we have a community, a failed community college. I, I don't know how else you can say it. He didn't succeed at what he was doing. He has a master's in English. I'm sure that if Harvard offered him a job for an English professor, he probably would take it. But Harvard isn't that dumb. They're not going to offer that job to him because he's, he's not qualified. He only has a master's from Arizona State. When you teach, you need a PhD, and you typically need a PhD from an IV or a top school, unless you have public publications and or maybe you have a best-selling book. So that's number one. The other main content creator on YouTube is someone who has collected a lot of donations. Um, he's collected money for his medical bills, which he was told specifically by a doctor. And we know this because he tweeted this out. Uh, if he didn't tweet out his entire life, like how he hates Donald Trump, we wouldn't know this. Um, and we would just all feel really bad for him. But it's hard to feel bad when a days before he traveled to Star City Con and La GP Las Vegas, he uh, said that the doctor told him not to travel, but he was doing so for the love of the community because he wanted to meet you guys. Well, it turned out he injured himself before he could meet anybody. And he raised quite a bit of money, which I still find it kind of funny that the majority of the Magic community is okay with this, uh, okay with donating their hard-earned money. They, they work, you know, they work nine to five jobs. It's hard doing a job. And you donate your money to somebody who has never had a job in his entire life and by doing so you are creating a system which encourages him to continue never to have a job because of ibs but a transatlantic flight no problem no problem so these are our role models um on youtube our pro ro role models just go Go type in Owen, type in the Peach Brother Oath, Owen, Huey, Reed. Those are our pro role models. Um, they're either incredibly unrealistic that free Magic players, their age with their clout can change social justice forever. And when one of them gets accused of something, of uh, harassment of women, the other two don't defend them. That would be, I mean, the Peach Brother Oath was the Free Kingdoms, right? It's a Chinese fairy tale. It is a fairy tale based loosely on real people, the romance of the Free Kingdoms. 
I feel embarrassed. As a Chinese person born in China, I was born in Shanghai, I feel embarrassed they're referencing the, that. And, I mean, imagine if the Peach Brother Oath was just that, free people talking about social justice, and then suddenly one of them gets accused, and then <laughs> nothing, and then the other two are like, oh, damn, we're out. Man, China would be a different country, but it would it would change history if your peace brother oath was as fickle. It's kind of like, oh, during good times we're gonna be friends, but as soon as one a person gets called out, we're like persona non grata. So PewDiePie has not done any of these things. He's not as creepy as my fellow friend Frank, who hits on every teenage female that he sees, even though he was dating and in a very ser serious relationship with uh, the now Wizards of the Coast employee, Melissa. You know, the stories go on. Some stories involve babies and cheating with employees and, you know, not even employees, people who you're the boss of. Subservient people who you can tell them, hey, I want to blank, blank, blank you. And they will probably, you know, say, oh, well, maybe I don't want to lose my job and this is awkward. Okay, I guess so. Uh, we have uh, judges um, with, you know, their relationship with their high school freshman students uh, and all this really bad stuff. Yet PewDiePie is the big danger to our community. He's such a danger to our reputation. It's not the Kotaku article that comes out. This is the same kind of thing that they said about um, unsleeved media to a far lesser extent. And which is now he's now called decordering, right? They compare, they think he's a danger, and why is he so dangerous? Like, I don't get it. He's not committed any harassment of women. Um, he has not um, physically gone to somebody, a teenager, and asked them to come to his hotel room. He, in fact, when he travels and when he goes out, he's a very private person, and he doesn't want to interact because he knows that any interaction can be blown up to something that is on Washington Square Journal. He's the perfect candidate. Uh, he is the perfect candidate. He has more subscribers than everyone combined. Every magic content creator on YouTube and or a pro combined, he has more Twitter followers than everyone combined, and yet they won't acknowledge him they won't say oh pewdiepie good job pewdiepie um i think it's very sad that we are so misguided in our political stances and that we can't see what is super obvious the guy is he's a humble guy he's a good guy he's been vetted every single day everyone's waiting for him to mess up or do something bad so they can make a video about it or a newspaper article or a magazine, yet they rarely catch him doing anything too bad. Now, yes, in the past, he's done things that were not great, but he's apologized for them. And that's more than you can expect from a Magic player, right? Alex Bracini wrote a apology on his Facebook, which is now deleted, by the way. But we have our Reddit thing. And basically, he doesn't take responsibility for it. He blames us, the audience, for encouraging him to play to the best of his ability, which is cheating. But, like, I don't, I think that's not really an apology. That's more like, I did it because, so you could love me. It would be like if your girlfriend or boyfriend, if you are 0.001% of the female population watching this video, decided to you know, kill someone for you. And you're just like, what did you do? Like, you need to do this. It's a little uh, extreme, right? And even when we talk about, I had a friend, he is a fan of Andrew Yanyuk. But Andrew Yanyuk, when I grew up and I read his uh, post, Andrew Yanyuk is the number one Hearthstone player. He owns uh, a team that's worth um, 10 million plus dollars, an esports team. But when he was a Magic player, he was caught for cheating got banned for cheating, and then went on a rampage to burn our bridges. And good for him, you know, just like Darium's and when he moved to Pokemon, good for them. And Unsleeved, when he moved to uh, whatever he does now, good for him. I think the problem, the problem really stems from the danger of PewDiePie is 
right is he's a danger to the current hierarchy of content creators in magic because he is not all about that social justice he's not all i mean man like some of the stuff mtg mayfer owen we've only been how many mythic invitations do we have we have two so for every single mythic invitation we have a serious issue there's only 64 of them right how can this happen time and time again it doesn't make any sense like did not we not vet these people like now a lot of you will say i'm very harsh on owen i think i am pretty harsh on him but that's because he's in the spotlight he's one of 32 people being paid 75 percent a seventy-five thousand dollars to stream magic all of his streams on twitch are hashtag sponsored because he's getting paid it's his full-time job i will say this again and oh subscribe to my other channel but let me conclude by saying PewDiePie has a lot of better things to do than play MTG Arena. He plays MTG Arena because he loves it. What can the man if if we took Magic the Gathering out of the Mana Source's life, how would he get donations? How would he pay for health insurance? How would he pay for the collectible original art that he invested so heavily on right after his surgery? The answer is he would be nothing without the Magic community. Nothing. And that makes him dangerous. That makes him very easy and suspect to do Pico Trade, the monthly magic box, which Tolarian has done as well. I don't do it because I don't need the money. What's Pico Trade going to give me? That makes me do a video. They asked me two times. I was one of the first people asked because I do MTG Finance. I get asked all the time by these like Pico Trade copy clones. Great. You give me $100. Okay, that's less than I spent on uh, Fire Emblem Heroes to write when I'm talking to you. Get out of here. Get out of here. Anyway, bye guys.